It's arguably the most anticipated political book of the year, a new biography of President Obama that reveals new details of his early life, which the New York Times calls both surprising and gripping. And the author David Marinus is joining us right now. His brand new book is simply entitled Barack Obama, The Story. Uh, David, thanks very much for coming well, in. Thanks very much for here. writing this book. You know, a lot, of, uh, not a lot, but key elements of what the president himself wrote in his autobiographies, you, you learned were not necessarily all that factual, not necessarily based on reality. What was the biggest difference you found? Well, he acknowledges in his memoir that there are composites and compression of time in there. Um, and, and it is true that there's a difference between memoir and rigorous factual biography. I would say that what he was doing was trying to put everything through the lens of race so that he creates characters um, somewhat built on real people that I found, but sometimes the real person was white when he was making them black or vice versa. And it was all sort of for one purpose in mind in his in his memoir, which was to write about his self-identity. And my purpose is far different. Any biographer is trying to just get the real story. So I wasn't doing it to fact check or vet in that uh, superficial political sense. I was just trying to get the story right. If there were any doubt where he was born, you put that to rest. You study that pretty closely, right? I don't think any serious biographer ever had any doubt, but uh, the accumulation of documents is pretty overwhelming, as well as interviews with people who were in the hospital scene that week and were passing along the word of this oddity that Stanley had a baby. That's the first name of, of Barack Obama's mother. Furthermore, there were INS documents uh, of Barack Obama Sr., who was on a visa from Kenya and was sort of problematic for the INS. They were watching him every day. So I have the documents of the INS reporting where he was during the period before, during, and after that So what that do you say birth. to all these birthers out there, whether Donald Trump or others, who still don't believe he was born in Honolulu? I don't know what you can say. I mean, there must be some other... I, I'm, I sort of, on one hand, don't want to deal with it anymore, but on the other hand, I'm curious, what drives them? Why do they want to believe this fantasy? And if you look at polls, there's still an element out there who insist he's really secretly a Muslim. Well, that part I found to be uh, particularly delicious in doing the reporting of the Obamas in Kenya. Their rise, his father, his grandfather, it's true, converted to Islam, although he did not practice it very devoutly. But when you study the rise of the Obamas in Kenya, it was conservative evangelical Christians who were responsible for their rise all the way along the way. The Seventh-day Adventists came out to Western Kenya to the Luo tribe and taught them English. Barack Obama's father was educated at an Anglican school and then was basically mentored by a woman who came to, the, to Kenya from the United States to spread the gospel and teach literacy. She's the one who brought him to the United States. So it had nothing to do with Muslims. Yeah, and one of the most compelling parts of the book, and it's a sad story, is you believe that the president was actually better off not really knowing or having a life with his father. You know, that's a difficult thing for, for me to say, but as a, trying to be an objective observer historian, I think that's true. That uh, Why? It, Tell her. Because his father um, was abusive. And uh, he wasn't with, with Obama's mother for more than a couple of months, but the next woman he married, another American, told me gruesome stories about being beaten by him um, with a, physically with his hands, had a knife to her throat. Just a, a con He was an alcoholic and very abusive. And that would have been difficult, of course, for any kid. And you're also right, movingly, how he struggled with his own racial identity. Give us an example. That is the last third of the book. He's trying to figure himself out. And his whole... His whole uh, adult, uh, early adult life is an arc towards home, going from living with white grandparents, having a white mother, um, to finding himself in the south side of Chicago, finally as an African-American. And along the way, I have letters that he wrote where he's describing this struggle and how he's looking at other people with different niches and he's trying to figure out how he can be both everything because he is both black and white and also find a comfort level in the black community. You know, you, you've also written a great biography of Bill Clinton, now a great biography of Barack Obama. Two presidents, 
two two guys who grew up really without a father. Yes. Uh, but emerged very different in terms of their social behavior. Bill Clinton, he could go schmooze, he could go uh, socialize, he made everybody feel special. Yes. This president, very different. Why? Yeah, well, part of it is uh, coming from Hawaii. There's a saying there, cool head made thing. He's sort of laid back and cool in that sense. He doesn't need people. He figured himself out. He worked, he's a, he was an introvert. He had the sensibility of a writer, which is sort of a participant observer. And Bill Clinton needed people so badly that in high school, he would invite friends over just to watch him do a crossword puzzle. You know, I mean, he, he has a preternatural need and ability to survive with other people, which Barack Obama never had. You know, at one point you write how it's tough for him to make a serious decision, but he did decide to go ahead and give the order to kill bin Laden, even though there was no guarantee that mission would succeed. It, was that in his character? It was. But what you see, it, going back to his days as a community organizer in Chicago, his mentors and people who worked with him there said he was very cautious. He would deliberate and deliberate to the point of sort of driving them crazy. And then he'd make a bold move. And you see that in his presidency. So, you know, not just with bin Laden, but also with uh, the don't ask, don't tell decision. For the first two years of his presidency, the gay community was sort of pounding on him. Why aren't you acting? He's trying to figure it out. His life is a study in how to avoid traps. So that's why he sometimes appears too deliberate. You working on part two right now? It, it'll be a while because I don't want it to be a quickie. I want to get the documents, but there will be a second volume. We're yes. looking forward to that. Uh, thanks for all the great work. Thank you. The book is entitled Barack Obama, The Story. The author is David Marinus. Okay. Major speech on immigration at a national Hispanic convention, but can Mitt Romney win over Latino voters? Hillary Rosen and Eric Erickson, they're both standing by live for our strategy session. And a potentially dangerous air leak from a government bioterror germ lab. We're learning new details. That's coming up at the top of the hour.